Another day, another countertop. It's regular. Of course I did. Sample. This is all before. is bonding primer. No peeling. The base of this counter is cement that um, was painted over because brilliant. What this stuff is is it's transparent and it's good because you get a gray base and it's a lot easier to cover with the black like you do light blue if you do blue you do pink you do red This is all dry from the primer. Doesn't have to be an even coat since it's under black.
a base coat. It already looks good. Let's see what the black drawers. It's gonna look great. It's gonna look amazing. Let that dry overnight. Action. It's a big build up for not a lot. So day two, we have the surface prepped, masked off, primed, sealed, bonded, and ready to go. We're gonna start with this top one, top one, top bar, because gravity is gonna knock some, knock, drip some of our resin off to the bottom. We did have this to be like a catch-all but because heat gun it so we put this down just to catch whatever may fall off because we are also resining resining we're also doing this part so we're going to mix up our resin it's two part just like always it is envirotex light we like using this for our bar tops because many reasons uh, one of which is that it is heat and alcohol resistant and also waterproof, no polishing required, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And because of the stress test that we've also put it through, it's, it's the best for what we, we need it for. We're starting out this top bar with a full kit, which is 32 ounces, 16 and 16. It's two part resin. I should go over why it's important, but just tune into one of our other videos that goes over it. It's in literally all of them. Just mix it well. What do you do? For this amount, we'll probably mix it up for at least six minutes. We got one of these handy dandy buckets that shows parts and measurements and all of those things. It's helpful. You can also weigh out your resin. A lot of people use scales. That's too much math for me right now. It's earlier in the morning. What time is it? 12.45 in the afternoon. He's doing that I'll show you guys the test piece again that we did for this client I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see much of it because reflections put it right here it's silver and heavy silver and black marble with kind of um, the metallic paint in it with um, silver spray paint. The paints that we are going to use are India ink. You can get it Hobby Lobby anywhere, just any black ink. We like to use inks because they have a transparent nature. We're also going to be using this, which I introduced in a previous video, Lumiere by Jacquard. I don't know if you can read it, but it is number 563 metallic silver. It's a metallic acrylic. I'll show you what it looks like when I open it, but it's a thicker paste-like metallic paint. Doesn't take much. And then where usually we use a gold overlay we're using a silver <sighs> ideally I probably would have used Rustoleum but we're going with Montana with for this one the number is 
somewhere. It's silver chrome by Montana, and that's the brand. The series is gold, but it's silver. When you're mixing, make sure you scrape the sides, the bottom, your stir stick. Everything that touches resin needs to be equally mixed so you don't get weak spots in your resin. Now if you can see the bubbles that are being mixed in there, we'll take care of those later with our heat gun. Next, we're gonna dye our resin. Honestly, depending on how opaque you want it, it doesn't take much. That was two dropper fulls for probably what equates to mm, 25 ounces instant tar. You're giving quotes, babe, like you know what you're talking about. What, what do you think it is? I have no clue. There's no way you can know that. <laughs> I mean, how much is in that little dropper? No, you, you, I'm saying you did two droppers for about 25 ounces of resin. This is 32 ounces of resin. Well, it used to be, and then you poured some in here. It's probably 30 ounces. Darker? Um, I don't think so because the base is dark. We always add more than here. We need to get that out of there. Yeah, I just want to show what that paste looks like. You put in there. Um, two of those, probably. Beautiful.
here's where we're at. Still wet, still settling, so it's not an even finish yet.
This is after, what, four hours? There's just no way to get a good video of it. It just looks black. Day two, black marble. Looks like this, wait. Yeah, looks like this. It's a little bit wavy. The temperature dropped here last night. So since this original base is something, concrete, yeah. It used to be concrete. Oh, I can't see it now, but yeah, you can. It's concrete. So it retained the coldness. So we jacked up the temperature in the townhouse last night and so it's pretty warm in here today. We're going to ensure that our resin is at the required temperature, which is above 75 degrees, below 85 degrees for optimal application. Optimal. Yeah, optimal application. Is that what I said? That's what I said. What else? Oh yeah. Because it's concrete, there are these very annoying little like indentions that we couldn't get our rolled paint or the resin to go into. So we're going to paint these in black today before we add the top coat. That way those won't be visible. Additionally, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. Um, we take this off obviously, but since it used to be concrete and we taped it off, you can see it and it's not pretty. So to remedy this, we're going to spray paint it. Make a deal. So in order to do this, we are blocking everything that we don't want the spray paint on and going for it. Anytime you work with spray paint, stay away from anything flammable, combustible. So, I mean, this is a gas range, everything's off. Wear a respirator and have proper ventilation. Ta-da! Now it doesn't look like this looks like this. So now we're going to do the other side. All right, you get pro tip on a Thursday. Normally it'll be pro tip Friday. But if you're just doing a small area painting and you don't want uh, overspray, if you don't have paper to uh, put down. If you just crease your tape, give you a little wall right here. It's where the paint has nowhere to go. So you reduce any or all of the overspray. Which is pretty much a given with spray paint yeah. and airbrush. Spray paint goes where spray paint wants to go. It's very resiny. Very resiny. Let's do this. This way you don't have to like pull out appliances 
just to make sure your edges are sharp. Just mask it off when you spray paint. Spray paint has so many wonderful qualities. And pro tip, another one, if you have a graffiti shop or a skate shop, sometimes they have them at skateboard shops. Or Amazon. Or Amazon. You can get, uh, it's what graffiti writers use for everything. Thin lettering, fat lettering. Um, you have to have an adapter to put it on this Rust-Oleum. Um, but it, it, it comes out smoother, not so just sprays like full force. Um, I believe this is a New York Thin. You get a more controlled line. Yeah, more controlled. Paint comes out nice and smooth. It makes a big difference. Like, and you can see like there's hardly any overspray. Like, no splatter. Hardly, yeah. It's so fresh and so clean, clean. Uh, here is another uh, pro tip which we love to, to use. Um, if, you, if you sand a lot, which we do, and you, you, know, you wanna fold your sandpaper in half, when you're sanding, you don't realize when these are together, and you're sanding, 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 turn it over, sanding, and then you, you wanna use this side. This side is pretty much wore down as well because it's touching itself while you're sanding. So, I figured, if you put a piece of cloth in there, fold it, it gives you a little better handle, and for your countertops, it's it's uh, it's really good because it gives it a, I guess what would you say, a flush uh, sanding. Like, <laughs> um, and you don't leave fingerprints. So if you're like, if you're just sanding, most likely you're gonna leave like sanding prints, I guess is what you could call them. And this doesn't pretty much allow that. It gives you a good, even sand. See that? Nice little even sand. 220. I'm gonna want these up. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? So while he's sanding, I'm going to warm up this resin. You can see it's kind of the bubble moving pretty slow in there. It's pretty chilly here in Dallas. So a good way to get your resin up to temperature is to get some warm water and just let the resin just be in there. It's not like boiling. Obviously, I wouldn't be able to put my hand in there. I mean, I would on accident. That's just my style, but. Anyways, we're just going to give these a warm bath while he's sanding and while we are masking everything back off. Ideally, your resin should be between 75 and 85 degrees in order to avoid this. This lumpiness that client didn't mind but um we mind so we're gonna try to get it as smooth as we can even though it is over concrete so yeah so after hitting it with a 220 you can see where all these little divots and dips are because it's not a smooth surface so it's gonna get sanded differently They're not pits, they're just waves. So we are standing it with the 220 in order to give the space a good tooth for the next layer to adhere to. Don't worry, all these scuffs will get filled in with resin. We're going to sand it all down with the 220 and then we're going to wipe it all off with um, a 91% alcohol. It won't take long for that to air dry and then we will proceed with the process. So see these little guys? All these little spots. 
are where we couldn't get our resin. So in order to remedy it, to fix it, we're going to, I just sprayed some spray paint into this cup and I'm gonna use a small hard bristle brush to get it all up in it. Oh, I thought you meant to. Blonde moment. Cause I thought that was the plan. Change that, we're just gonna spray it right all up in it. I'm scared, okay. I don't know where the hole is. <laughs> I'll be John Brown. Just focus that with my nose. Skills. So these have been sitting for 15 minutes. So much better. I need to get the... Uh... brush on it at all. You're at 64. I don't know if you can see. Nope. Where am I? Right there. Focus. Will you hold this? Alright, take it. Alright. This is where we're at before. We got a new toy. Looks like this.
so good. Bottle number three for the top coat. Put, uh, put some heat. Looking really good so far. Take care of that and that and all the bottom. Just gotta do the top now. How's it going? Um, nice Second coat's done, and assuming nothing gets into it, that's a wrap. It's gotta sit. Thank you.